Hello and happy Monday. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. This month, we are going to be talking to phenomenal women who are mothers and business owners. I took off for a couple of weeks because I needed to um, address some health issues that I've been having. And so I wanted to start off uh, the Speak Up and Inspire series tonight by first saying thank you to Lisa Mullis of Women Reaching Higher. Her and her organization um, donated food to my family because um, I was in the hospital all last week um, dealing with some health issues. And so it's been a really big um, task for my husband to be able to um, be a full-time dad, taking care of the kids full-time while I was in the hospital, um, fixing dinner for them, everything that he's that, that he needed to do in my absence. I was literally in the hospital from Sunday to Friday. Um, and so he took on the task of being full-time dad in my absence. Um, I'm very appreciative. Um, he did a, a great job. We had a lot of support. And part of that support came from Miss Tanya and Miss Lisa, who made arrangements to feed my family this week to help us out um, while I am trying to get my strength back and um, and just provide for my family while I am dealing with these health issues. So I want to first say thank you to Lisa and Tanya for arranging to feed my family tonight. Um, Lisa made homemade lasagna along with salad and garlic bread. Now, when I tell you that that lasagna was good, <laughs> it was really good. Um, that's something that we will be able to take to lunch tomorrow and eat on tonight. So thank you again to Lisa for, um, for cooking for us, for, excuse me, for providing for my family tonight. And please say thank you to the ladies at or in your um, Women Reaching Higher group who helped make that and make it possible to feed us tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. Tonight, we are going to be talking to Miss Frances Watkins. Miss um, Frances is very, very, very special to me. Um, she is not only a phenomenal mother, she is um, very dear to my heart. She is also my mother-in-law. Um, she's very talented. Um, she's very inspirational. And so it's fitting for me to have her on the show with me this evening um, to talk about being a mom, raising three kids, working full time, and still finding the time to start her own business and help others in her community. So please join us tonight. If you are not already here, please join us so that you can get to know Miss Francis and learn more about her and what it takes to be a full-time mom and still be successful and do what you need to do out in the community and impacting lives, impacting people that you run across, but also still keeping your head up, still being a strong woman, being religious, believing and having a strong faith in God. Um, there are so many things about Miss Francis that I um, admire and then I love about her. I remember, <laughs> um, I'm not sure if some of you know, but my husband Cedric is almost 10 years younger than me. And so I was really, really nervous meeting his pretty young mom. Miss <laughs> um, Francis is maybe 10 years older than me. And so I was a little nervous meeting her. Very nervous, actually, um, meeting my boyfriend's mom. But when I met her, it did not take long for me to like her. Um, her smile is infectious. Her energy is is awesome. Um, anyone that comes around her is going to love her. And I'm sure that you're going to love her, too. So we are going to invite Miss Francis to come online with us right now. And while we are waiting for her to come on with me, I just want some of you who I see are moms. So hello, Ms. Brenda. Hi, Dee. Hello, Ms. Rose. 
Hello, Miss Emily, who is our, my auntie. Hello, Miss Francis. We are waiting for you to come on. And hello, Miss Jessica. All of you are mothers. But what I want you to do is I want you to type in the comments about what do you feel as a mother has been your biz biggest success as a mother? I know Jessica. have a 11 year old twin so type in the comments as a mother what do you feel has been your biz biggest success since you became a mother and you came into this motherhood lifestyle <laughs> hello mommy how are you hey darling how are you hey mommy <laughs> can y'all hear me Yes, um, I'm doing okay. We took advantage of the light still being outside and it being really nice outside to, to talk to you outside. <laughs> cool. Plus, the twins are inside about to kill each other, so we're outside hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis, um, you're a mom. Tell us tell us about your kids. How many kids do you have? How old are they? And um, Let's tell us about your kids right now. <laughs> I have three kids that I birthed, two sons and a daughter. I probably have about 20, 25 other kids that I acquired <laughs> along the way. Um, they're wonderful kids. All of them have their challenges and they've, they've come above and beyond their challenges. Uh, the biggest thing was... Mm, having them and watching them grow, being able to watch them grow and become wonderful adults. That's, that's been the accomplishment is being here and being able to see all of that, hoping that I did or said something along the way to um, help them in their adult development. Um, without being... Like my son, so you know that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for your your handsome son over here. <laughs> Look at him, mommy. <laughs> he looks like his mama. <laughs> yes, yeah, that is your twin. So, <laughs> but, mommy, tell us, um, as a mom, what do you feel has been your biggest challenge as a mom? The biggest challenge was finding the right time to do everything. I mean, when you're a mom, that's a 24-7 job. And um, especially being a single mom, working like I work, because I work 12 hours rotating shift pretty much all of their lives. And right. there were things that I had to sacrifice time and sleep so that I could be there for them. I was probably a better provider than I was a nurturer, but um, it all works together. As long as they can say that I was a good parent, it doesn't matter if I was a good mom or a good daddy-ish, I was a good parent. So that was the thing, finding the time. Right. Um, I know uh, before Cedric and I um, started dating, um, I was a single mom. And for me, saying that I'm a single mom just means that I didn't have um, a partner in the home um, to help me with them on a daily basis. Um, even though their father is active in their life, um, I was still the one that was home with them all the time. 24-7, um, taking off for doctor's appointments, being there when they were sick, um, making sure that they got to school every day, homework every day, so forth and so on. So not to take anything away from their dad, um, but I was a single mom. I was taking care of um, two kids. And that's, that's probably, um, I would say probably the hardest thing that I've ever done, but the most rewarding thing that I have ever done um, is raising my kids. And I know that I haven't been perfect at doing it, um, but I've learned so much along the way, not just from other mothers, um, 
like you, but also um, from my kids too, you know, learning unconditional love and, and how to, to nurture and to make sure that I'm there for their needs and so forth and so on. Um, you were saying that finding um, time with your kids um, was your biggest challenge. When it comes to um, providing for your kids um, and supporting them and finding that time, did you have a, a good support system with them when they were growing up? Uh oh, did I did I lose her? <laughs> uh oh, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh oh, mommy, are you? I think we're stuck. Okay, all right. I lost her for a minute. I'm going to invite her back in a second. Um, but what I was asking was, when you're what is it? that what is it that you had that helped you support your kids? Did you have good support systems in place to help you with your kids? So if you are on with us right now, then please tell me what is it or what did you have that supported you as a mother to be able to be successful? Um, we're gonna try to get Ms. Francis back on so that she can talk to us. Um, as being a, a full-time mother, um, raising my kids, you know, with the help of their father, of course, but not having someone in the home to, to help you um, can be really challenging. For the simple fact is that you're the one that has to be there whenever they get sick whenever they're upset, whenever they're angry, whenever they have projects that need to be done, um, so forth and so on. So being a mother full time, as especially being a single mother, has so many challenges. Um, you don't have a book. There's no book that tells you how to be a mother. I think it's all about, um, it's all about your, your, your background, joining i'm sorry i'm reading reading and trying to talk to you guys at the, at the same time as we try to get miss francis back on the phone um being a mom um there's no handbook there is no way to um to know what it is that you're supposed to do you have to learn by your natural instincts you have to learn by your experience and your background um there's just so many there's so much that goes into being a mother and a father as well that we don't learn in school. We don't learn in when we're going to work before we have children. These are things that naturally come to us um, that we have to learn through process of elimination sometimes. Um, and Ms. Francis was able to do that with three kids. I have two of my own. Um, I would love to have another one, but I can imagine if I would have had triplets versus twins. Um, so mommy, you're back. Yeah, I am. Okay. Not sure what happened, um, but I was asking you, what kind of support did you have um, as a single mom with raising three kids? My parents were alive and they helped me Oh my God, especially with me working rotating shift. My parents were there. Um, my baby sister was there. Everybody just took turns doing everything. Because we were in Wake Forest around my maternal family, they were on it 100. So there were cousins, aunts, mm -hmm. uncles that stayed on top of everything. Um, my God brothers, Warren and Duncan, they helped me in the later years, getting them to and from school. Um, and most of all, God, God just looked out for me and made sure that um, the village was real. He right. just made sure the village was real. He, um, 
work things out so many times. I remember being on the soccer field at 8 o'clock, the football field at 11, the basketball court at 2, <laughs> and still got a nap and got to work at 6. So, you know, it worked wow. out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those days when the twins were um, doing basketball and then they were doing, um, uh, what is it called, the robotics classes. So it seems like every single evening, my evening was dedicated to what the kids um, needed to do, wanted to do, and what I wanted to provide for them. So raising three kids, how did you take care of yourself? What did you do for for mom to make sure that you kept your sanity? Well, I had to, each of the kids needed their own time with me. So I would have a day for this kid, a day for that kid, a day for that kid, a day for all of us together, and then a day for just me. And it took a whole month to get those days done, but it had to be that way. Um, That was pretty much all I had at that time. My mom, she was the greatest babysitter ever. (laughs) <laughs> and she made sure that I had downtime and stuff, but that was all I could do. That was all I could right. do. Unfortunately, their daddy was not an active part of their lives. Um, mm. That was his choice, sad as it was, but there were other guys that I worked with that really followed on that um, that village thing, and they stepped up when it was football and I didn't know what the heck a cup was. <laughs> <laughs> the guys from my job, you know, they went and, and made sure that, that Milton Jr. had a cup. I was like, what the mm-hmm. heck? You know, <laughs> questions that I was not able to answer because my brother was so much older than me. Um, the men at my job, they stepped up and were, they made sure that they were there for my boys. So right. as for time for me, it was very little time for me, but I, I had to know that the day would come where I would have time for me. I'm still waiting for that day, but <laughs> 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 <Don't come. laughs> Well, I know that your kids, um, you're older, they're out of the house, um, but you mentioned that you have other children that basically adopted you as their mom. Um, and you also um, take care of your your grandchildren as well. Um, for you, and now that you are, you know, your kids are out of the house and you have your grandchildren around and so forth and so on, um, what are you doing for yourself now? What are you doing now that all the kids are out and they, they're, they're accomplished, they're successful? What are you doing for yourself right now? Well, um, I work out a little bit, the exercise, trying to get my health back, trying to, trying to get me back because I needed that level, that balance in my life for me. Um, mm-hmm. For me, hmm, what do I do for me? I don't know what you've done for people for so hard to, it's hard to do for yourself or, or to really know how to do for yourself. Um, right. What I do in the gospel industry is more of a passion for me. When I see other people grow and do better, that makes me feel better. That makes me feel mm-hmm. good. That makes me feel accomplished and all of that. Um, I might travel a little bit for me personally, but other than that, nothing much else. Okay, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, You are in the gospel industry. Can you tell us um, what it is that you do in the gospel industry and a little bit about your organization? My organization is called Right Touch Promotions, and we are the home of Make It Gospel, the broadcast, the compilation CD, and upcoming video. Um, What we do is we help educate other artists on what is out there in the business part of the gospel industry because a lot of them really don't know it's more to it than singing. Um, So we we offer the educational part. We help help radio stations so they can get heard on the radio waves. 
we help we help set up events. We help other artists set up events. We host events ourselves. Uh, we do a lot of things in the gospel industry. I have about five other people that hang out with me, and we are, we do it as a passion because all of us have regular jobs to take care of how we live. So we do it as a passion for the most part, but whatever money comes into Right Touch, we put it back into Right Touch to help other artists as well. Okay. Do you sing yourself? I sing sometimes. I help my cousin. <laughs> 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 yes, I've heard you sing, honey. <laughs> so um, you hold gospel events and so forth and so on. Do you manage um, individual singers or bands? I actually manage. I am what is considered as a... Um, uh, I am the right hand of the management, the paperwork, okay. the, the behind the scenes stuff. I am the person that does that. I don't actually manage, but I help. I do the groundwork for the managers. Okay. And I work at it. Got it. Queen Seven of Florida, Renewed of the Carolinas, mm -hmm. CJ Taylor and Men of Fellowship. Those are the three artists that I'm working with right now. Okay. All right. Um, do you have any events that are coming up um, that you would like to tell us about? I sure do. I am so excited. We're getting ready to do the Make It Gospel compilation video. The special part about that video, it is geared towards the hearing impaired. So we Ooh, will have okay. the interpreters there doing the sign language and stuff for, you know, for the hearing impaired, and it will be professionally video by Michael Bowie of Platinum Productions. So we're going to do that September 28th. So y'all come on no. to North Carolina. I'm so excited about that because it's different. It's different. Right. And, um, it's necessary. People think that hearing impaired people can't hear, but they can feel the music and we'll have the interpreters there to to you know, give the words and stuff like that. So, and we'll have a mime right. team there. We're gonna have a youth mime team there because our children are doing some wonderful things. Wow! Yes, wow! That is exciting. Um, with our new clothing line that our family has started, Vibes Over Everything, we have a um, a young lady who is hearing impaired. And so it's been great to work with her because she's able to educate us about the different services in Charlotte, North Carolina. But I know that you're in Raleigh, North Carolina. So what made you to decide to, um, to add this to the show that you have coming up? I have a friend, uh, my friend Deshaun Ratley has a son that is hearing impaired. And okay. um, I was talking to one of our great promoters, uh, Mama Zadella Curtis, and okay. she was talking about the hearing impaired, how, how the quartet industry does not embrace um, things of that nature. And I was like, well, we can, so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. And that's what that's what we got it from. Okay. Yeah. Um, we um I've talked to Tia and then I've also talked to the domestic violence um advisory council here. Um and they were saying the same thing that we have a lot of advocacy groups here, but we don't have any advocates that are hearing impaired that can raise awareness in the um in that population. So it's really nice to see that um organizations like yourselves and the community organizations are starting to reach out to those that are hearing impaired or for those that are intellectually yeah. challenged or something like that. So that, that's, that's awesome, mommy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> love it. So one question that I want to ask you, and it's a little personal, but you're my mom, so I don't think you're going to mind, is that you were a single mom and I know as a single mom myself had to turn the lights on sorry um I know as a single mom myself that it was really hard for me to date <laughs> as a single mom so how did that go for you as a single mom how was dating for you because I have a couple of young ladies that are listening in right now that I know are single um that have little kids so how was dating for you as a single mom 
Well, I didn't take anybody around my kids until we had been dating probably three or four months when I was sure mm. that they were going to be there for a while. Because um, right. I didn't want to set a challenge for my kids to see so many people coming through and then I didn't want to go through all of that myself um, right. Right. and having mom and Emily around to help with the babysitting and stuff I did have a little time to date um, here and there and working rotating shifts so it just right. kind of worked out a little bit but um, I was very careful about taking people taking guys around my children so they didn't right. They didn't see the um, the failure ones that much. Okay. <laughs> they, only saw, they saw the long term. They saw the long term relationships. They didn't see the no, no. Um, there were those who only got the peel off. <laughs> there were those gotcha. who only got the peel off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, what did you find challenging when you were dating? I know for me, it was it was finding time to date. What was your challenge when, you know, you're, you're still a mom, you're still a woman. Um, so it's nothing wrong with us as single mothers dating. Um, but what did you find to be your challenge? For me, it was finding time to actually date. What was your challenge? Well, time, time was always a challenge for me. Um, the other thing was the BS. <laughs> Men say such the dumbest things sometimes, and I had mm -hmm. I had very little patience for it. So, right, um, finding the time and finding the right formula and a guide to even make the sacrifice to come up with the time that was the right. that was the right. Yes, I found that um, in dating, I started to become really selective um, because as the kids got older, um, I wanted to make sure that if I did bring somebody around, number one, they were going to be respectful of my space and my kids. Um, but also because I knew my kids were watching, you know, the twins, they're very perceptive. <laughs> they're watching everything. So aside from making time to date was finding men that one would be good around my kids if they ever got to meet them. Um, but I did notice that when dating that a lot of guys, um, didn't want, I guess the, the, how can I say, did not, were not as open to the fact that my time was so limited. Um, that was kind of a turnoff for guys at times when I. Yeah. Yeah. Then you know that was not the right one. Right, exactly. My kids are my priority. So I found that that was something that I ran into too. But um, just like you said, that also weeded out whether they would be a good fit for me or not. <laughs> yeah, that, that helped. Guys will do and say yeah. stuff to help you decide how far you're going to, uh, you know, will they get the P.O. box or will they get the residential address? <laughs> Um, can you share with us, um, have you always had your own business um, as a mother or how, how new is Right Touch Productions? Um, right Touch is, it came to, into play 2015, so it's not always been around, but I've okay. always, I've been in the gospel industry since I was five years old. Um, okay. Started singing with my dad and at 10 I started playing piano. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so being a mom, being a business owner, raising three successful kids, what would you say was your best advice that you've given your kids when it comes to just being adults? What is something that you found yourself, um, you know, wanting to impress upon your, your, your kids as they were growing and becoming their own person? My thing was to be your own individual. Um, you don't have to follow the crowd. You don't have to follow what everybody else is doing. Uh, be the one that they follow. Uh, set your own standards. Set your own pace. The more you know about your situation, the better the better decisions you can make. I say that right, right. But all the time, I still say that the more you know about stuff, 
the better decisions you can make. And I tell my kids that and my grandkids that find out more. You don't you don't have to make a decision right this minute. Find out more. Right. So you have three kids of your own. How many grandchildren do you have? Say that again. Everybody is dinging in on me. Oh, you have three kids of your own. How many grandchildren do you have? Nine. Nine. I, <laughs> <Lizzie>. <laughs> um, and I'm sure a couple of possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that being um, a grandmother now and being a mother, do you feel that things have changed with raising children versus when you were a mom to being a grandma now? Yeah, things have changed. Um, technology has taken some of the good stuff out of parenting and out of being, out of, out of being children. Technology has right. taken some of the good part of being a child away. So, yeah, it, it's changed drastically. Um, Except for in my house. <laughs> yeah. I know that um, you have uh, an 18 year old granddaughter, right? Ray is 18, right? Yes. 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 So Ray is 18 years old. Um, what is what is your advice for her right now? She's about to prepare to um, to graduate from high school. What is your advice for her right now? Well, she's um she's a young 18. So we have a life coach. I have a life coach for her to help her transition into being an adult because um some things that that she encountered in her life set some challenges up that other kids may not have. So um I tell her still, let's let's look this up. Let's get some more ed information about certain things that come into play before we say yes or no. Um, right. And just take your time. It's no hurry for you to jump out there and not be sure of what life is all about. So we just take right. our time and learn things a little bit more differently in detail. Right. Right. That's very good advice. Um, I've, I love Miss Ray. She's um, she's a beautiful girl. Um, I'm very proud that she is 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 accomplishing such great things, um, especially being up under you. I've seen a drastic change. Um, yeah. I think that you have been very instrumental in all of your kids' lives. All of them love you to death. All of them want to be around you. Um, <laughs> so that is one of the things that I admire and love about you so much is that your family truly cannot wait mm. to see Nana or Mama <laughs> or to be you. My kids are always wanting to be around you or wanting to see you. Cedric is always missing you and wanting to see you and talk to you. Um, you and Cedric have a really unique relationship. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this now that I never liked any guy's mom that I have dated <laughs> ever. <laughs> Either we don't get along or she thinks that I'm trying to take her baby boy from her or she's just nasty or I don't like them. I can <laughs> honestly say, and I, I've told Cedric this, I said, you are the first mom that I think that, well, no, I'm, I'm let me take that back. You're the, probably the second mom um, in my 42 years that I actually connected <laughs> with and have had a good relationship with um, because they're so easy to talk to. But then when I met Cedric, um, I know that like my mom and my my father always told me that you can always um, tell the way a man is going to treat you by the way that he treats his mom. Yeah. And one thing about Cedric mm -hmm. is that he adores his mama. He loves <laughs> you to death. Um, and I think you two have a a a beautiful relationship. Mm. I hope I have that same kind of relationship with, with my kids where, you know, they, they feel free to come and talk to me. You know, we can go out and we can enjoy each other, but they still know that I'm mama. <laughs> um, 
he respects you as his mom, but he also calls you his best friend. And um, I think that, that that's really special for um, parents to have with their kids. How did you how did you raise your kids to respect you as their mom, but still have a relationship with you where they feel comfortable coming to you and talking to you about anything? Because you and Cedric talk about everything. I <laughs> That right hand is the respect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> hey, um, communication. Now, in in any relationship, whether it be family, friends, um, intimate communication, is a very big thing. Then sit down and talk with my kids and open the door for my kids to talk to me about stuff is real important. Everybody will say, um, don't try to be their friend, be their parent. And it wasn't so much that I tried to be their friend. I wanted to be that parent that they could be that friend with. Whenever mm. came up, they wouldn't have so many... Um, restrictions on coming to talk to me you know when first times on things you know you had to be able to have that conversation and not feel like you were going to be judged about stuff and I try to be that way in friendships we can talk this is a no judgment zone this is planet fitness of the heart you know this is the no judgment zone yeah let's talk about it and that was important the communication right right Right. Um, so communicating they say some stuff now. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> so you be like, what? And and um, Christian friends, I'm sorry, but at some point in time, there was a bottle of liquor that got me through <laughs> some of them conversations. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So now that you're saying that, um. Having those conversations that you need to have. Now, the twins are 11, but I'm already starting to talk to them about sex and dating and respecting your body and so forth and so on. Um, I don't believe in using pet names for body parts and, you know, not having the conversations um, that... I feel parents should have with their kids. Um, how was that for you raising your kids? Did you have those frank, direct conversations? Um, how, how did that work in your house? Uh, my thing was, if they can put the words together and ask me the question correctly, mm -hmm. they got the right answer. And okay. when Victoria came to me asking me why was her body different from her brother's and, and other little questions and stuff, um, I went to the library, I got books, I got videos, and we all sat down, we watched some videos, mm -hmm. and we had a full discussion, so it was, um, it was the actual body parts, it was no pet names, because when mm -hmm. I tried that one time, um, I think Tori, Tori always challenged the heck out of me, where did we come <laughs> from, and everybody was talking about the, the, um, cabbage patch and all that kind of stuff like that and my daughter uh -huh. said God don't like it when people lie to children I was done I was <laughs> done I said alright if they put the questions together right I'm answering mm -hmm. their questions because they're going to go mm -hmm. they're going to keep asking different ones the question until they get something that they can relate to right. I don't want to clean up nothing so I'm just going mm -hmm. on and answer them from the start so I tell people don't send your children to me because I'm going to tell them <laughs> I'm going to tell them exactly what they want to know. Don't send your children. Right. And, right. and that's how I got so many other kids because they would come and say, hey, my dude, what is this? Why is that? How is this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> look on my face says that I want to be asked all these daring questions. But if they ask me right, I answer Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember uh when I first met you, I was like, whoo, she she you know, she's she's a she's fiery. 
<laughs> but I love that you were so down to earth and the fact that I now growing up I didn't have that relationship with my my parents where we talked about sex and dating and all that kind of stuff openly we didn't do that in my household um and I wish I was able to because if you're if children are not asking their parents then they're getting the inf information somewhere else and a lot of times the information is wrong especially if they're asking their peers and their friends um so I wish that I so going on and answer the question and be done with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I remember um having a pretty awkward conversation with you when, <laughs> when Cedric and I first started dating. Um and but I appreciate it because when when you know, hmm, how can I say this? When a child has questions of a sexual nature or dating nature or relationships, so forth and so on. We don't want them to learn the wrong information and not yeah. saying that we're experts and that we know everything, but as the parent and as the adult, I think that our children should be able to come to us and not be afraid to come to us. Um, I tell the twins all the time, if you have something on your mind or if you want to know about something, come to me. Don't be afraid to come and come to me because I'd rather you talk to me first. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's one thing I've um, I, I'm just another thing on my list that I've always admired about you is that you're, you're very candid, pretty frank, pretty direct. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I would go in it jokingly. I would pick at them about something. And when uh -huh. Laughter opens the door for a lot of things. So if you can laugh about it first, then you can sit down and talk about it. So Cedric and I'm going to tell right. you, I pick up them all the time about stuff, girls or whatever. Mm -hmm. I pick up. And finally, it got to the point where like, mom, this is what happened. I was like, oh, yeah? Right. And then I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But yeah. <laughs> too much, too much, too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cedric, was Cedric and Milton, oh my God. Mm. <laughs> they challenged everything in me. They did. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. And I've, and I've heard some stories, so I believe that, <laughs> honestly. Um, for for mothers now, in this, in this time that we're in right now, it's very different from when your children were babies and growing up. And of course, even with my kids growing up, things are constantly changing. What is your advice for moms now when it comes to um, being a mom first, um, but then you know, still being a woman and still being an individual and, and having um, goals and priorities for yourself. What, what is your advice to other mothers? Hmm. Talk to your kids. Talk to your kids. Um, tell them about life. Tell them that it isn't all cushiony and that there are some realities that you're going to have to face and help them to start facing some of it now so that they won't get shocked when they go out the door. That would be my biggest thing. Talk to them. Communication. Talk to them. And let them talk to you without yes. judging them or without being so quick to get angry or, or whatever. Talk to them and let them talk to you. And, and you can grow. They can grow. And life won't, life won't surprise them. Right. That's good. What would you um, give as a, a suggestion for staying true to yourself so outside of your kids and how to help your kids how to how to how do i as a mom or how how do other mothers um as we're still women you know we still have pursuits we still have dreams we still have goals um staying true to yourself while still being a mother what would what would you say you have to create that time for yourself um i hate that i didn't do certain things earlier in my life, like going to college or, or things of that nature. Um, mm -hmm. That was one job that I really wanted and had the opportunity to get it. And I made a bad decision and let it go. Um, mm -hmm. Really think about what you have on your table and how you want to serve it up and how you want it served to you uh, for yourself, aside from being a parent. Mm -hmm. You as a person, you as a woman, look at what you got on the table and determine um, 
how you want it served and go right. from there. Take take right. that time. Take that time and live out your dreams. Don't keep dreaming. Wake up and live some of them dreams. Right. That's that's important. Um, I think as parents, sometimes we can get lost in taking care of our kids and, um, you know, what, what they have to do, what they have going on, um, their health, are they, are they being successful in school, so forth and so on, so on. And I know for me, it got really overwhelming, especially not having a partner in the house and I'm doing all of it. Um, again, their dad was active. I'm not going to take that away from him, but that every day, from the time you get them up in the morning to the time you put the, them to bed at night. And then it doesn't even stop there. <laughs> um, and sometimes it can get overwhelming and um, you have to recharge and take care of yourself. And um, I know I've said plenty of times on this podcast that self-care is so important um, to just being a person, but being a mother too, um, because that's also a teaching a teaching point for your children to see that self-care is important for them as well, to take the time to, to get the rest that they need to, to, um, to take care of their, their, their mental and their spiritual, um, you know, that everything doesn't have to be at a hundred all the time. Sometimes it's okay for you to just lay down, take a nap, read a book, yeah. listen to some music. <laughs> well, yeah. for me, walking, walking and not on a treadmill, Treadmills depress me, but walking right. outside in fresh air, um, mm -hmm. that purges me. Right. There's nothing wrong with taking that moment. And every woman needs to take at least 30 minutes a day and do nothing but purge your mind. Because as mothers, as women, as adults, our minds go at 100 miles an hour. Right. But we need to take at least that 30 minutes and just Musa, as my son say. Musa, yeah. mom. <laughs> uh, we have Mother's Day coming up. What are your plans for Mother's Day? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Nothing. Nothing sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I will probably be down there harassing you. I will be harassing you. That's what I'll be doing. Harassing me? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I think the, the twins, they most likely will be home. Um, we're going to have the pleasure of having Miss Ray with us this weekend. So we're looking forward to that. That would be a nice treat um, for this weekend. Your house, I won't be there. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. We will have Miss Ray for the weekend while you go and have some self care and enjoy yourself um, this weekend. Um, what is your biggest success as a mother? I asked everyone earlier that was watching to to let us know what their biggest success as a mother was. For you, what is your biz biggest success as a mother that you think? You know, Tiffany, my oldest son got in trouble earlier on in his life, um, went to jail a little bit for a little while, and I beat myself up about it, feeling like I, I failed as a mother and everything. But my son wrote me a letter, and he told me, he said, Mom, don't blame yourself for, what, for how I turned out or for what I'm doing or, or anything like that. You gave us all great choices. You gave us all great opportunities, and you gave us you gave us the free will to make our choices like we did. And um, he said, "I made some bad choices." And he said, "You've been good. You've been good." He said, "I couldn't ask for better." And to have have my children to tell me something like that, I don't know. That that makes me feel full. That makes me feel full to know that. Now they see that that I tried. I just need for them to know that I tried. And if right. if nothing else, I tried and I meant well, I meant the best. Right. There is no no book that says perfect parenting. And there's no way there's no way you can do it perfectly. 
It's all trial and error from conception to death. <laughs> so, so I mean, you know, there's nobody that can tell you that there's a perfect parent or a perfect way to parent. There, there is no perfecting parenting from conception to death. It's trial and error all the way. Right, right. Yeah, and that's something that I said earlier. Um, for a long time, I was told that I could not have kids. Um, the doctors told me for years I could not have kids. So once I found out that I was having, um, I was pregnant, not with just one, but two, <laughs> I think I was in shock for like an hour because I'm like, I wanted one. What am I going to do with two? Um, but once I woke up from my <laughs> shock, it just motherhood just came natural for me. And for a lot of, a lot of women, motherhood comes natural for you, but you don't, you're right. You don't have a book. You don't have anything telling you, what is it? The, the books that come out, um, uh, 101 ways and the, 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 uh, what is it? Computers for dummies. There's no mothers for dummies books. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of books out there that do talk about motherhood and you know gives you suggestions and so forth and so on. But those never, those aren't the script. yeah. The authors, the authors of those books never met Cedric, right? <laughs> there's a lot of great advice out here but until you become a mom or until you you know take the baby home and put them in school you, you just have to go with the flow and hope that you're making the the best decisions that you possibly can make <laughs> yes yes well um is there anything else that you would like to share with us what are your what are your goals what what is what's in your future for the next year year or two what what is what is out there that's going on great for Miss Francis? Well, I've been talking with my oldest son and we're looking at going back into the food, going back into the food business, restauranting, um, food mm -hmm. truck, catering. So we're mm -hmm. looking into going into that later on this year as well. That's one yes. of the things. So I'm going to take some class food. So we're working on that. Awesome. Awesome. And um, my uh, my brother-in-law, I love him to death and he can cook. <laughs> <laughs> and so can you. So I am looking forward to that. Uh, make sure that y'all let me know when that's going to open so I can let everybody else know. <laughs> Definitely. Well, you know, we have to do our stuff anyway. He'll do our graphic yeah. No better graphic designer than my son, Cedric Sanders. <laughs> and my sister Emily Watkins, I am I am covered. Yes, yes, yes. We are highly blessed to have such talented people in our family. Yes. Very blessed. Very blessed. Um, anything that you would like to say to the moms that are watching right now, um, based off your experience being a mother, being a business owner, and trying to do it all, what is your advice? No more than what I've already said. Communicate with your kids and Put yourself in timeout every now and then. Just put yourself <laughs> in timeout every now and then so that you can still be productive um, as a person, as a mother, as a worker, as a business owner. Put yourself in timeout every now and then and do nothing. Do nothing. Love it. Love yeah. it. When, when, do I, when, when is my next do nothing day? I don't know when it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right so remind us about your event that's coming up and how can we get in contact with you and learn more about the event um i am on facebook francis luzetta watkins or on right touch promotions or you can go to our website www.righttouchpromotions.com and there's information there um yeah or you can call okay. me. What is or the date of the event again? September 28th. In, uh, it'll be in Franklinton, North Carolina. 
But you can okay. follow me. It'll be on Facebook. I okay. All right. So Right Touch Produ Productions, it's going to promotions. be in Septem September. Oh, sorry. Promotion. Sorry. Right Touch Promotions on Facebook. Um, you can friend Miss uh, Frances Watkins. You can also like her page, please. Uh, like her business page. Um, if you're into gospel or you're just into music, check them out. They have an event coming in September. And give me the date again. September 28th. September 28th, September 28th, doing big things. Also, you have, you have your talk show, correct? Oh, we're on radio. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us quickly about that. <laughs> on radio. We're on um, internet radio. Um, yes. That information is on our Facebook page as well. Okay. Great, great. Thank you so much, Mommy, for being our first phenomenal woman for the month of May um, with the Speak Up and Inspire series. I love you bunches, and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day, and I hope that you are going to take some of that time right now for you. No, I got, to a, get I got a meeting to go to right now, but I will eventually. Always oh, running. <laughs> All right. Well, we love you. Um, and thank you so much um, for being with us. Um, I will send you the link for the YouTube that is going to have the recap of our interview today. Uh, next week, we are going to be interviewing uh, my best friend, Lakeisha Steele. She's the owner of Keisha's Cakes. Um, she does custom desserts, delicious desserts. And I cannot wait for my strawberry shortcake that I ordered for this Friday. Lakeisha still will be next week. Thank you, Miss Francis, for being with us tonight. Everybody, have a good night and be blessed. Good night.